I'm Jonathan Cherry. SM Chochi Hen and myself have uh, three new comrades joining us in the GRC to serve you, the residents of Pasir Ris Pungu. We have Desmond Tan, Sharil Taha, and Yo Manling. We've gotten to know them uh, prior to the campaign and during the campaign. Uh, we've had a number of conversations. We've asked them questions, they've asked us questions. And we taped some of them. And we thought it would be interesting for you to understand what they were interested in and uh, what we had as points of discussion. Uh, so in this series, uh, they had a lot of questions for myself and SM Chochi Hen about the work we've been doing here in Pasir Ris Kumbu GRC. I hope you enjoy watching it. Okay, so finally it's our turn to ask <laughs> SM and Dr. Yeah. Daniel. So maybe I'll start off by maybe asking both of them, since you've been here for quite a number of years, and we also heard from residents there are a lot of developments in Pasir Ris and Kumbu. I'd like to hear from your perspective what are the things that you've done and also uh, give us some ideas of what some thinking behind some of these actions. Yes, sir. Well, Pasiris is somewhere between 25 and 30 years old, and starting from the east and slowly developing towards the west. And so many of the residents in Pasiris actually are now having children of their own. So the children are growing up and getting married and wanting to have places to live in Pasiris. So that's one aspect of Pasiris that is happening. We have more people in pastries as well. And so there are new developments that are coming up. In the last few years, we've had our walker center, we've had our sports center, but there also has been an increasing demand for housing for young families. So we are building new BTO flats for young families who are children who have grown up in pastries. Now, Cheryl himself is a little bit older than that, but he grew up in pastries too. And so we now have whole generation of young people who are in their mid-twenties, early thirties, who are uh, growing up and want a place of their own. Our last uh, BTO at Costa Riz actually was oversubscribed by young Pasiris residents and they've been asking for more since. So that's one very important aspect. But as the population in Pasiris has grown, we also want to redevelop the town centre. So we will have integrated transport hub, something which I think our residents deserve, uh, air-conditioned bus interchange, and most importantly, we are going to have better connectivity across the island. Mm -hmm. So people say, well, bus race is the end of the line, you know, the, the east-west line, but now we are going to have the cross-island line run through bus race, with two stations in bus race, and the cross-island line will run from Changi all the way to Jurong and with a spur from Pasiris to our comrades in Pongo. So this will make a big difference to the transportation of our residents in Pasiris. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the key developments that are taking place, mm -hmm. uh, new developments. As some, I also heard from some of the residents that you know they really appreciate the link between Pasiris and Pongo, the mm -hmm. drive one link. What was the origin of that and what, 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 what took place? Well, those times. I mean, we had Lorong Halus mm. as the whole dump site in between Pasiris and Pongo. And it was still operating as a dump site when I first became the MP in this area uh, in 1997. And then it was closed uh, shortly thereafter when it was transferred to Klaus Macau. And since then, the ground has consolidated, settled. So it is now beginning to be open for development. So it used to feel as though Pongo and Pasiris were you know, they could have been in separate, totally separate parts of Singapore, even though they're next to each other. You had to get onto the highways in order to get there. The buses had to get on the highways to get there, back and forth. Uh, and so, with the new road connecting buses and Pongo, that made a big difference. And we took the KPE and extended it a little bit further so that there are now exits from the KPE directly into buses and Pongo. So that makes a big difference yeah. for all our residents. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. And suddenly the two towns are so close together. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're totally connected. But, you know, from I, I, I'm an engineer myself, so I find the construction of the road an engineering marvel. Mm -hmm. Because actually that road is sitting on piles because the ground underneath there is not sufficiently consolidated to take all the weight. So it's like almost a bridge on land so that the road can be constructed. Now, then of course, the next phase connectivity between our two towns 
will be when the cross island line spur is completed. Two stations in, uh, in, 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 in Pasir Ris, two stations in Bongo from the cross island line spur. And so the towns will be connected not just by road but by rail. That will make a big difference. But, but SM, you know, if I can just jump in, the other connection between Pasir Ris and, and, and Bongo are the families that have grown yes. up in Pasir Ris and their children are now coming to meet you. Mm. And also the, the park connectors and waterways where now people can cycle across, mm. run across. I mean, it's a, they're, they're linked in, in several different ways, which yes. I find very fascinating. Yeah. Mm. It, it's an interesting difference because, you know, the old Bailaba Airport, or the current Bailaba Airport, which is going to be redeveloped, serves almost like a mountain range between two, two parts of Singapore. So people on the East Coast move up from the East Coast to, to, to Bedok, Tampines, and to Pasir Ris. And then people in the center move up to uh, Aokang, Amokyo, Senkang, to Pongo. Mm. And actually what happens now is our Pasir residents and our Senkang residents come across and they meet in Pongo. So it's, it's mm. wonderful for me to be in Pongo because when I'm in Pongo, I meet residents who come from Senkang and I meet residents who come from Pasir So it's mm. like a, a mix of, you know. Uh, uh, residents from both sides. So mm. it, it is, it's quite a nice feel. And so the family ties are very important. And that, that, that makes a big difference. Yeah. So it's a good segue to maybe Janio sharing with us in the last almost 10 years what are some of the developments in Pongo. Yeah. But could I add something about Pasir Ris also? Okay. Well, apart from the new things that we're doing in Pasir Ris, we're doing a lot of regeneration of Pasir Ris. Those blocks which did not have lifts on every floor, Provided lifts on every floor, we've had uh, so that's the LUP. We've done the neighborhood renewal program and we're doing it progressively for all the precincts and passeries. And we also have the HIP, home improvement program, mm -hmm. to improve uh, those things inside the home which need renewal. And our flats are about that age, and so it needs that kind of upgrading to keep the flats modern and, and in good condition for the future. Thank you. Well. Bongo as well has some other similarities with Pasir Ris and having a mix of old and much newer flats. Uh, the area around uh, Bongo Plaza uh, and the community centre, Bongo 21 CC, the southern part, uh, that's the most mature and it, and it feels like the mature estate. It's, uh, you know, it has uh, several generations of owners in terms of the flats, uh, some of the coffee shops have had renovations and redevelopment. Uh, and then out towards the west and the north, you have really brand new estates. And especially the, there you have areas where we are also bringing in a lot of new facilities. So the Waterway Point Mall and Safra really changed the character of uh, the center of the town. It brought a lot of life and buzz activities. Um, and that is very necessary for the generation of children that are growing up there. We had a real problem 10 years ago with childcare centers. We just didn't have enough. We built and built and recruited a lot of teachers. And now that's largely settled. And now you can see we're developing and opening up new primary schools. And fairly soon these kids are going to be running secondary, secondary schools. schools. Yes. And then they need a place yeah. to go out and hang out. And they have a mall ready for there. And you've got to have the leisure facility. So in a way, the what's happening in the town, it mirrors the growth of a family, you know, and the, and the children growing up. And then looking ahead, uh, what are our plans? Well, we've got a stadium that's coming. It's going to be a mission sports center. The town hub is going to come, that's going to bring a hawker center, a big library, lots of community facilities, and then SIT, uh, you know, Singapore Institute of Technology, a university coming into Pongo to create these uh, opportunities for tech STEM uh, pathways towards higher education. Mm -hmm. And part of that is going to be the Pongo Digital District jobs. So the, the, the way we have to think is, you know, now we've got lots of children growing up into through primary school. Where might we need to be 10 or 15 years from now? And they're going to need a, a tertiary education and they're going to need jobs. And that's what we're starting to plan for now. Hey, you know, Dr. J, talking about the digital district, I think this is something when I talk to our residents uh, here in Pongo, I think a lot of the younger people are very, very excited about this digital district idea. You know, do you think you could share a little bit more about that? And, you know, how possibly we can bring this message down to our residents a little bit better? Well, the key idea there are essentially two key ideas about the Pungul Digital District. The first is we're bringing jobs, a large number than 28,000 mm. potentially, into the heart of Pungul. Okay. The second wow. is this partnership between JTC and SIT. And it's the first time you have a commercial space 
and a university space interlinked so that you have the labs and technical set up inside of a commercial space and you have commercial facilities inside of the university so that the businesses and the academics can work in a very, very tight way. And what that means is you hope that the kind of businesses that are there are going to have a, a, a technological base, a digital base, and create jobs for the people who graduate from SIT. I mean, that's, that's the key idea. That the, the second key idea is create jobs for people who go to SIT who graduate from SIT. So that is likely to be technology and digital. So we're very excited. So it's mainly technology related jobs or it's a range of different kind of jobs? Yeah. Well, SIT has, has a wider base. I mean, they do food, uh, they health, do energy, right? they do health, they yeah. do uh, okay. waste management. But all of these uh, uh, industry domains actually are enabled by technology and increasingly enabled by digital technology. So the kind of stuff that you hope happens in PDD is not just about uh, you know, your software and your animation. You want it to translate out into real-world tech, how you handle food, waste, water, energy, and health. So so I think it's, it's a very good match. Wow, well, looks like Hongo is going to be an incubator of technology for a lot of industries. That's amazing. Wow. We hope so. We hope so. Yeah, and, and the whole green industry thing also is yes. a very important part of PDD. Energy, efficiency, conservation. And I think that would be a very important aspect for Singapore kinds of things that we want to do all over Singapore, perhaps also an exportable kind of knowledge. Yeah, SIT has some experience uh, in looking at uh, energy management and uh, green issues, uh, green tech sustainability issues. Um, so it, they can use the space and the facilities of the Google Digital District to kind of put those ideas into a real world living lab. And if nice. that works, spin off ideas, spin off businesses, and then hopefully export uh, and, and grow them into consumer-facing products. Mm. It's definitely very exciting, Dr. Daniel and SM, for you guys to share the past developments, what's happened in Pasadena's world. Well, as a past uh, resident myself, to see how Pasadena has developed and how Pasadena is now connected to Pongol, and to see more developments uh, bring us together, the Pongol Digital District, uh, more houses, the connectivity of the MRTs, it's definitely very exciting. So for SM, uh, yes. Given that we have all these past developments, new developments ahead, we are already the second largest GRC. What are your plans ahead for us? How, how do we come together? How do we integrate together the software and the people behind it? Well, I would like to see uh, Sharil and uh, Desmond Tan join me in Pasiris, and the three of us will work together uh, on the software programs, the community building programs to support our residents, young families, families. So adults are going into their 50s, into a new transitional phase of life, I would like to see Charil Desmond work together with me to create programs across the whole of Pasiris for our residents of that time. And then, uh, of course, we'll have now three MPs to look after uh, Pasiris, where we had two previously. And then, I think for Pongo, what we'd like to see is uh, Wan Ling join uh, Janil, and also work very closely together with our colleague Sun Shui uh, to develop the whole of Pongo Town as an integral whole. And very importantly, we want to run the town council well. Good financial management, good maintenance, and uh, make sure that we look after the residents' uh, SCNC charges and what we pay to the town council well. So all these are important aspects which we want to see across the whole of Pongo Town, Pasiris Town, Pongo and Pasiris working closely together. One of the unique issues with Pongo when it comes to that type of integrated program is that we have a lot of young couples, uh, new BTOs. So that, that is almost the single biggest demographic for uh, the area of Pongo that I'm looking after, the Sun Chueling. Some of it also in Pongo North and uh, Zio Wan Ling, but a little bit less. But the issue with young couples, of course, is many of them have children. And careers and, and other things that are demands on their time, parents to look after. So uh, getting that sort of community network of volunteers and activists, building up programs in a community, changing the homes into a neighborhood where everyone knows each other, it takes a little bit more effort. Um, and so we have to put some effort into building that grassroots network, that network of community volunteers. I mean, one thing I know has a lot of experience in terms of working in the community, 
uh, and we hope to tap on uh, Desmond's effort. Uh, he, although he's in past series, part of the same team, mm -hmm. but uh, his experience will hopefully help us to think about how we can do that and, and bring the Pongo family together so that we have that uh, deep sense of neighborhood, uh, which I think is important for, for, for giving people a sense of security and comfort in their homes. So uh, it's a bit of a challenge because of the demographic, but I think it's something we can work on together. I think our new candidates particularly bring diverse skills with them. As Janil said, in the caregiving industry, from the public sector, and Cheryl has a lot of experience working in the industrial sector, the automation sector. Uh, he was describing it to us earlier. And, and I think this is one of those things from his personal experience, which he can also take to develop programs to see how we can have uh, uh, reskilling and upskilling programs for our residents who may be mid career and who need to change or upskill their jobs so that they can remain uh, sort of employed in the new industries, in the industries of the future, Industry 4.0 and so on. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I said, when uh, I had the opportunity to work on high-tech industries in uh, building jet engines or building factory in uh, Germany, uh, Canada and UK, uh, there's a lot of experience that we can tap on on how uh, other countries have adopted Industry 4.0 and the digital uh, economy. So I'd like to bring that experience to Singapore and to the residents of Marseille's world well as part of the uh, PDD development also uh, to see how we can uh, prepare ourselves for this new norm, prepare ourselves for this new economy, to build, build better jobs for our economy and for our people. And I think definitely for me, um, working in a social enterprise, looking at caregiving for the last five years, it's given me a lot of insights to how uh, people look at aging, wanting to age at home and all that. And I think we should prepare also for Congo to be a, a I would say, a growing uh, older neighbourhood. And I think, right, with this kind of insights, we will be able to look at community care programmes within the community itself, uh, to do it in a very sustainable way. And also at the same time, I think, also to bring in the aspect of freelancing, perhaps for women who, you know, have uh, difficulty balancing work with, um, their family uh, commitments to come out and uh, do do both, both freelancing for livelihood as well as you know caregiving. So I think right this would be uh, something that's quite nice to bring over to the Pongo area. Do you all have any questions um, coming out from the interactions that you've had with residents uh, in your work, either volunteering or prior to the campaign or during the campaign? You have interactions with the local residents of Pasiris. Do you have questions on the basis of their concerns? Uh, yes, um, so uh, in the interactions with the residents, uh, some of them have asked about community gardens and agri-tech. They're interested in that. Yeah, uh, it's something that uh, I think we have uh, a lot of interest in. We have some of our HDB estates where residents have come together to set up community gardens, mm -hmm. uh, grow their own fruits, or share out their own fruits. Nice. Some of them do it entirely for leisure and they create a little uh, space for them to get together. So uh, I don't know if you'd call that agri-tech, but it's it's certainly, uh, you know, home, home, home agriculture. Um, we don't have a lot of agri-tech in the formal sense. There are some people, some businesses looking at hydroponics and aquaponics. Um, I think agri-tech as a whole will grow once SIT is here and that's an opportunity for them to do some research. But if you look at the greenery around Pongo, actually you have to understand that the direction it's going in is where Pasiris is today, where many of the trees and waterways and greenery is much more mature. And now they're undergoing a, a rejuvenation exercise in a, in a green town. So SM, you might give us some perspective on how that's happened over time. Yes, quite so. I think one of the things which residents in Pasiris really love is the greenery in Pasiris. They love the parks, they love the sense of... Uh, so they can breathe when they sort of come to the north of the TV. Somehow, you know, they feel... <sighs> <laughs> they, they sort of left the city and come home to, 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 to a comfortable and relaxing place. So that, that's one of the things which Pasir's residents keep on telling me about. So they are concerned that we have more buildings in the town, more residences and so on. So they said, how are we going to preserve all this greenery? So there are a couple of things going on. One, uh, even when we build the new BTOs, those BTOs are going to be built on land which has already for housing. So we're not going to take any of the parkland, any of the 
green land, which has always been designated as green land for housing. So only those housing land could go for housing. And even the new BTOs in that stretch, uh, we've had consultation exercise with the residents, and we are going, we're working with HDB so that the designs there will provide green verges and also a visual um, uh, sort of green corridors between the present passeries into the park and onto the sea. I think that's something which our residents love. And for the new town hub, what we're going to have is actually a crossing from the town hub into the park at grade plus one. That means you, it goes across drive tree. So you can walk from the new town hub right across into the park. And I think that's something which I think when the residents saw it, said, wow, I like that. This is Pasiris. So these are some of the things that we're going to have in Pasiris. Yeah, I also get some, got some feedback about the development of the white sands in the interchange area. I think they are excited about it. So you're wondering what was, what is the timeline? Is there any impact, especially due, due, due to the COVID situation? Yeah. There, there is some delay because of the delay in all the various kinds of construction work, particularly uh, because of COVID. But that's the delay of a few months. The MRT system will take many years to build because it is a completely underground system and heavy rain. So that's being built for really the long term for Singapore, 50, 60, 100 years, and not just for the next five or 10 years. So there's going to be a lot of work, but I think the payoff in the end for residents is really well worthwhile. So that part uh, will take place. We still expect to finish that, say, around 2030 or so, the whole line. Because it's no use building a station and part of the line where you can't go anywhere. So you're going to complete the whole MRT line first. And then you can get from one place to another. So that whole line will take about 2030, that kind of time frame to finish. So those are the kinds of time frames. Uh, but we expect that the town hub should be ready early. And one of the things which uh, we made sure that we do for the town hub Transport hub is we take care of our young BMT soldiers, our young recruits. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, recruits are sort of left at the side of the, 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 the bus interchange <laughs> to catch the bus, you know, in the sun or the rain or whatever it is. So now we made sure that we bring a proper place for them to embark and disembark mm -hmm. inside the integrated transport hub. Mm -hmm. And even our temporary bus interchange will have some facilities for them. So, SM, um, and, uh, I love the developments in Pasiris being an uh, ex Pasiris resident or growing up in Pasiris. Uh, and one of the most enjoyable stretch of road is through Pasiris Park, through the Red Bridge, and through Pongo, yes. and to enjoy the whole scenery of the waterway. Uh, you're a cyclist, you take that quite often, right? <laughs> yes, I, I, I love that route. It's one of the most scenic routes. Yes. So, could you tell us a bit more about the uh, greenery stretch from White Sands to uh, the Pasiris Beach? to the Pasiris Beach. Yeah. Well, that part, the, the Pasiris part, will be preserved, including our mangrove area. So what will happen is now, right now you want to get from the, uh, the sort of white sands area across into the park. You have to cross the roads at green. Even if you're cycling, if you're pedestrian, you have to cross the road at green. So when the integrated transport hub is ready and the town hub is ready, you can cross at one level above the so there's no need to cross the road at grade in order to get there. So it'll be much smoother to come in. And then the park itself will then become almost an integrated part of the town centre. And I think that would be quite beautiful. Quite beautiful. Definitely very exciting. Well, I should add that, you know, for those who are sort of very concerned about environmental issues. We are placing solar panels on every HTV block in Pasiris and Congo where it's possible to place solar panels. So you can see that already happening. Uh, the new blocks in Pongo have the solar panels already. And the existing blocks in Pasiris, we are putting in solar panels essentially as quickly as we can. And that will help to do a couple of things. One, it will save our town councils electricity cost, so save our residents money for 
paying for electricity for the general lighting and, and so on for the town. And the other one, of course, is it good for the environment. Yes. So that's happening as well. Hong Kong residents are quite uh, interested in the environment. Uh, and some of the developments were built as eco-friendly, so the tree lodge was the, one of the experiments that HDB had put up many years ago as an a eco-precinct. They've experimented with different designs and different other precincts, whether it's uh, rainwater collection, whether it's about the greenery and waste treatments. But it's something that, that, that people in Hong Kong appreciate, the, the kind of integration of life with the greenery and the waterway. Around. The waterway itself is a central feature of life in Hong Kong. It's mm -hmm. yes. something that many of the PTOs look out yes. onto. Yeah. Uh, and they have the, 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 the lagoons on either side, and then of course the Water sports, both in Marina Country Club and down at Anchor Vale. Uh, so that water and greenery is again very much part of life. Mm -hmm. in. Well, I look forward to going kayaking with uh, all of you uh, in, along the waterway. Yeah, uh, that's one of, favorite, first, favorite, uh, <laughs> one of our favorite. Go kayaking. One of our favorite objects. But you know, apart from the hardware, I think we've talked about this before. I know Desmond and Charlie and, and, and Marling also are also very concerned about this which is the software part. I mean, all of us are going through major challenges, jobs, new phases of life, for Congo, it's newly married couples, suddenly you're living on your own, you have to provide for yourself, you have kids to look after, uh, for, for, for passeries. Uh, we have residents who are many in their 50s now, who were the original owners of the flats when they moved in when they were 30 years old. The kids are growing up, Major responsibilities, education of their kids, their parents are growing older, and they themselves are growing older and facing job transitions. So we also need to help provide and help them to make these transitions in life. And these are important things which we will try and do as MPs if we are elected. Something that several of the families that I know will find very difficult. They're, they're young, they they may be PMED background and career, but given what's happened with COVID, they have a great sense of uncertainty. And they have parents that depend on them, they have children that are growing up. Um, so I think we have to find ways to give them the reassurance about the, the future trajectory, the opportunities that they can create both for themselves as well as their children. It's going to take a bit of work, uh, but uh, we have various resources we can call on. We have things like Project Success, which is a job pension that's very local. We have uh, Merchants Association, but we also have local businesses and trying to get all those jobs matched with the need. Uh, we also call on people who, who do retraining and reskilling, the labor movement. And we have uh, centers for, for retraining and reskilling that we, we have connections with, and we get people there to, to learn. Uh, ultimately, we of course have our own education institution we talked about, Google Digital District and SIT come here, uh, and that will make a lot of opportunities uh, possible. And for our families in these different phases of life, we're trying to provide them as much support as possible. So for the young families, we are going to make preschool education as affordable as primary school education. Usually, preschool education is relatively more expensive than when the kids go to primary school. I mean, other than for miscellaneous fees, it's you know, relatively affordable. So we're trying to make preschool education as affordable as primary school education. So that would be a great help to the young families in uh, Pongol and of course Pasteris we're going to have young families too with the new BTO. Then for the sandwich families who have older kids and older parents, mm -hmm. the Pioneer Generation Package and the Madeka Package actually would, we hope would be a great help to them too. Mm -hmm. We have 950,000 Singaporeans who are Pioneer Generation and Madeka Generation and they benefit from especially the medical, uh, additional medical subsidies for the Pioneer Medica Generation Package. 950,000. That's one out of four of every Singaporean. And every family has elder, grandfather, grandmother. And we hope that this will also help the sandwich generation to take care of their elders and their seniors in their own families and help to relieve the burden. So, both at the looking after their parents there, looking after their young children, and of course also for uh, tertiary education, poly, ITE, university education, 
we are also providing many more subsidies, many more bursaries and financial schemes so that these remain accessible and affordable for Singaporeans. Maybe we'll have a last question, yes. one for Pastor Riz and one for Sure. And as I, if I could add, in addition to all the hardware and software that we have, the, the residents of Pastor Riz Bongo came together and we saw a resilient community coming together to fight through these difficult times. In the past three to four months, we saw how our residents volunteered, step up, during the three mass distributions to distribute up to 350,000 masks in just one week to the residents. In addition to that, during the SG Buka Puasa, during the month of Ramadan, our multiracial volunteers came together to distribute 10,000 meals for the needy. So on top of the hardware and the software, we have a vibrant, resilient community of residents in Pasiris Pongol. That is going to be exciting if we want to work together with you. Maybe just uh, ask whether you have any one advice that you want to give to three of us. One final advice coming to Pasiris Pongol. <laughs> Both of you, uh, SMQ and Dr. Janik, sorry. Sorry, yeah, one. I'm getting cross-eyed. Well, SM, okay. shall, I, shall I go first? Because it's always easier to go first in this type of question. <laughs> well, I would say uh, one final advice, uh, we have to work hard. Uh, there are many challenges out there to, to be faced. We have many volunteers and activists that will help us to engage with residents, and channels for the residents to come and engage with us. Uh, the really difficult thing, which I think is my one final piece of advice, is to go out there and find the problems and challenges that no one is going to bring to you. Uh, that requires a little bit of effort from us as members of parliament, should we be elected to serve the residents of us in the GRC. Uh, it's not something that's obvious, but uh, I think it's something that we should uh, try very hard to do. I would echo what Janine has said. If you're elected as members of parliament, you're there because your residents trust you. They want you to help them with their lives, with the challenges that they face in their lives. So it's important to go out there, talk to them, understand what they want, what they need, and to help them to fulfill those dreams that they have for themselves, their children, and so on. If you can do that, touch their hearts, help them with their lives, then you will have done something worthwhile for them. And you'll get that sense of satisfaction when you do that. For, for me, I've been an MP now for 28 years, uh, and in Pasiris for since 1997, so 23 years. And I now see families who I saw the kids grow up, and now the kids are having kids themselves. <laughs> it's just a wonderful feeling. It's a wonderful feeling. Now, now I cannot hug them. But it's a wonderful <laughs> feeling to be able to carry them, and hug them, and cuddle them. I mean, that gives you a deeper sense of satisfaction, which you know is incomparable. And that's the kind of feeling you get. You work with the residents, and you get to go there, and you really feel a sense of bonding with them. That's the ultimate satisfaction. And I hope that you find that too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.